Welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to be covering bar graphs. So today's roadmap looks like this. First, we're going to review all the frequency distributions we've looked at so far. Then we're going to talk a little bit about bar graphs and how they're different. Mainly, it's that they involve categorical variables and looking at the frequency of each value. And so then we're going to contrast bar graphs and histograms because they're going to look very, very similar to each other, but they're very different um, ideas underlying them, but they look superficially similar. We're going to talk about whether shape applies to bar graphs, central tendency, and spread as well. All right, first let's review all the frequency distributions we've looked at so far. What was on the y-axis? Well. Since they're frequency distributions, largely it's something like frequency. Sometimes you'll see uh, frequency distributions that have relative frequency. And that doesn't change the shape, center, or spread. Because you're basically just dividing by a constant. Now, what was on the x-axis? Now, remember, in all of our histograms, dot plots and stem plots so far, what's usually on the x-axis, or in the case of stem plots um, in that sort of y-axis, that center column, um, that's going to be the values of the variable. Values of a variable, whatever your variable is. So, so far we've looked at variables such as height, um, number of friends, what else have we looked at? Um, we've looked at, let's see, I think like photos, number of photos, right? Those kind of variables, right? And so we have each of those variables and we have all the values for that variable on the x-axis. All right. So now, um, let's look at the different types of frequency visualizations we've looked at so far. Types of visualizations. You could think of them as graphs or charts. So we've covered dot plots. Remember what those look like? They look like, like little dots or stars, right? Uh, we've looked at histograms, which look like bars, right? Those are pretty frequent. Uh, we've looked at stem and leaf plots that have the actual numbers in them, like 2, 3, 4, and then they have like 0, 0, 5, 0, 2, 4, 5, right? And now we're going to look at bar graphs. Now when I draw a bar graph, which one does this look like? Well, it looks very similar to the histograms, right? Well, here's the difference. So far, in all three of these kinds, right here, right, in all three of these kinds, the variable of interest is, has always been continuous. There's something in between um, you know, 62 inches and 63 inches, right? They're um, like having, having 100 friends and 101 friends, it's meaningful. Having 101 friends, it's having exactly one more friend, right? So these have been uh, interval, they have been ratio values, um, and so these variables have largely been continuous. Now in bar graphs, for the first time, color this red so that you know it's different. So in bar graphs for the first time, we're going to be looking at variables that are categorical. And if you recall, categorical means that these variables are, um, are going to be like little bins, right? There's, there's Nothing in between one and two in the case of categorical variables. Um, 
And these are going to be largely useful for things that are nominal measures, things like gender, have it being male or female, right? There's sort of, I mean, there are some things in between male and female, but uh, for the purposes of most statistics, um, we treat that as a categorical variable. Um, there's sort of nothing in between uh, hair color. Uh, you either have black hair or brownish hair or blondish hair, right? Uh, reddish hair, um, other colors. Um, there's sort of nothing in between eye color. It's not a continuum necessarily. And so because of that, categorical variables are going to be uh, visualized in a very different way. Um, and these, very, uh, these visualizations are going to be called bar graphs. All right. So let's go ahead and look at an example of a bar graph. They basically look like histograms superficially, but the way you could tell is by looking at the x-axis. This is how you're going to be able to tell whether it's a, um, whether it's a histogram or a bar graph. Because on the x-axis, you should see a categorical variable. All right. So here we have a nice bar graph. Notice that it looks almost exactly like a histogram. One of the differences is that in bar graphs, there's spaces in between uh, to indicate that these are separate bins that cannot be uh, sort of continuously looked at. Um, and because of that, we see that, let's see, here we see the same information as we saw in the frequency table, that being single is the most frequent category. Uh, being in a relationship is the second most frequent. These are all um, much less frequent, and uh, it's, it's somewhat common to leave it blank, but not, not too common. All right, so that's one example of a frequency table. Uh, for, oh, sorry, a bar graph. All right, note that it looked just like a histogram, but the difference was we used categorical variables. All right, now let's take that example. I've just copied and pasted it on here. Um, let's look at whether shape, center, or spread of distributions that we've looked at before apply to bar graphs. Now let's think about this. Is this really, can we really say that this is sort of a skewed right shape, that it has a tail over this way? Hmm, let's think about this. Well. In order to answer that question, we might want to think about this idea. Would it matter if the order of the bars were reversed? Let's say I decided to put the people who left it blank over here and people who um, said it's complicated. I decided to dummy code that as number one, right? Um, and then let's say I decided to switch uh, single and married and in a relationship with engaged, right? So I, I switched all of those. Then it would look like a left skewed uh, distribution, right? And so, um, really, the ordering down here is largely arbitrary. There's no rule that says that we have to put these values in this order because being blank, single, in a relationship, engaged, married, complicated, other, um, it doesn't really have a set order that corresponds to numbers. Um, we might have some sort of order in our head, like being married is the most committed, being engaged is second committed or something. Um, we might have some sort of order that we want to put on it, but largely this is an arbitrary ordering. We could switch up these bars and that would be okay. However, in a histogram, you cannot arbitrarily change uh, the value the bar for value one and the bar for value two, right? Because those, in that case, one and two actually mean something. Um, it means something numerical. Here, one and two don't actually mean anything numerical. It actually means something nominal. It's just a stand-in for a name, right? And so because of that, shape doesn't quite apply. Neither does center, um, except for mode. Mode is the one that we would use for categorical variables. But, um, I mean, how would you have a mean here, right? And spread doesn't quite make sense here either. Um, so, 
in a, in a bar graph, we can't quite use the same concepts that we've been using for the rest of the frequency tables, frequency graph, uh, visualizations. All right, now let's move on to example two. Let's create a frequency visualization for gender. And what would that be called? Well, let's answer this question first. What would that be called? What kind of variable is gender? Well, gender, you could have values such as male, female, blank, right? And so we would consider that a categorical variable. And when you have a categorical variable, we know we're going to be making a bar graph. All right, so let's go back to our examples. So if you move on to the gender sheet, here we have genders, values, 0, 1, and 2. Um, 1 means they're a male, 2 means they're female, 0 means um, they didn't put their gender down. All right, so let's put in our formula. Count if, and I'm going to go to my data, and let's find the gender column. So let's see, here's the beginning. Ah, gender is right here. All right. And then I'm going to put in a comma because I know I need that. And let's put in this uh, gender. So count if it is zero their value is zero. And let's lock this data in place so that we could easily copy and paste later. Oops. All right, oh, so it turns out, nice and easy, that zero people have left it blank. Well, so then male and female should add up to 100. So 52 plus 48, yep, adds up to 100. So why don't we skip that blank one because no one uh, left it blank. And let's just select male and female. And then go to charts and hit column if it's not already selected. And go ahead and create a bar graph. So here on the x-axis, we have a categorical variable, gender. And here we have frequency, just as we did before. Great. All right, let's move on. Example number three, suppose we collect the following information for each student in a class. Age, hair color, number of siblings, miles from school, miles they live from school. Um, so what are the cases in this data set? And what kind of variables are here? So is it categorical or continuous? And what kind of frequency visualization uh, would we create for each variable? All right, let's start with the first question. What are the cases? Well, what are, what's the thing that sort of uh, unites all, all of these four variables together? Well, that's going to be each student. So each student is a case, right? Okay, so what kind of variables do we have here? I'll put this in blue. So what kind of variable is age? Continuous or categorical? Well, Age, those numbers actually mean something, right? Being, being 10 and 11 and 12, and there's always stuff in between. So age is continuous. What about something like hair color? Hair color, we usually code it as something categorical. What about number of siblings? Well, number of siblings is sort of tricky because um, the number means something, definitely. Um, having one versus two versus three. Three is definitely more than two, right? Um, but there's no such thing as having like 2.5 siblings, right? So does it count as continuous? Well, I'm gonna list it as continuous for now because one of the things is going to be that later when we have, when we create an average and we say maybe uh, the number of children in a family are something like 1.75, right? Um, we know that that average, it means something. Um, so because of that, I'm going to list it as continuous. Miles from school, that's also going to be 
continuous. All right. So because of that, what kind of frequency distribution of visualization would we use for each variable? Well, for age, for every continuous variable, we use a histogram. And so why don't we just fill that in for all of these? And for our one categorical variable, we'd use bar graphs. 